I don't know about you, but I'm obsessed with lists. I make lists about everything, and I've been making a list about what I've been purchasing. Like, let's just talk about like beauty, hair care, makeup, that sort of stuff. Um, for the past couple of years now, and every five, six months or so, I look back on it and I figure out whether that product was worth it. So I thought maybe if you're interested in watching this, you can get kind of like an overall idea on whether I wasted my money or not, so you don't have to. G'day guys, welcome to Yenai Beauty. My name is Tanya and I'm your personal little guinea pig. And as I said just before, we're going to talk about some products that I've purchased in the last five months or so, um, pretty much from the beginning of January until now. Um, and I'm going to let you know what I think about them, whether I think I wasted my money or whether I've even used them. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk to you about is I've just got to get into my little list here because I keep it on my phone because if I didn't, I would lose it. I literally lose everything. In fact, do you know how often I lose this phone? I really need to get myself a white one. Anyway, 2022 beauty purchases. The first thing that I purchased, and this was in January, was the Ole Henriksen Lemonade Scrub. I'm going to move over so I can stick some pictures up here for you guys. Now, I really did enjoy this. I put... <laughs> I would buy this again, but I don't want to pay the money for it. I think this is like $40. Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> my showers are bougie. I'm not going to lie. I have like lush body washes and Hask shampoo. I have like um, all sorts of special um, leave-in hair conditioners and stuff like that. But I don't know about this. I just... I don't know. It's just a little bit too much money in my opinion when I can go out and get something for $15, $20, or half the price of this tube um, and get the same result. I mean, the, the smell is going to be different, but do I really want to pay double the price just because I love the smell of something? I'm not sure if that's enough for me. So if this fell in my lap, I would definitely use it. It's a great product. I absolutely love it for my elbows, my knees, um, even just sometimes when I've got like excessive skin. I even use it on my hands. Um, it is lovely, it does work, but the price is just a little bit too much for me. The next thing that I purchased was the Ole Henriksen Truth Juice Cleanser. I'm still going with this. This is a lovely cleanser. It's got kind of like a an orange sort of scent to it. Um, I, I've not used it to take off my makeup, but I definitely use it as a second cleanse or a first cleanse for the day. It's very gentle, um, even with the scent in it. Um, again, though, the price, Ole Henriksen, you know, they've got good products, but I just don't know about the price point for my personal liking. So, yeah, I would use it if it was here, but I don't know if I'm going to go out and purchase that one again when I know there is a ton of other ones that are far cheaper that work just the same. Um, yeah, <laughs> and on top of that, I didn't really... I don't really want scents in my face products, um, I just don't find it necessary, especially since my face is very, very reactive. I mean, I just touch it and boom, red. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. The third thing that I brought this year was the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, and I really enjoy this. I use this for my under eyes. Now, granted, I, I brought a shade that was probably too light, so I have this, um, uh, light number one Chantilly one here and I usually use it for underneath my eyes but I feel like while the product is good it's highlighting my wrinkles um, and I know that typically you sort of want to brighten up that area and don't get me wrong I do but I also don't want to highlight my wrinkles it makes me look older than I actually am so I'm trying to find something that's maybe just a little bit more close to my normal skin tone um, <laughs> I'm happy with that. I don't need to be brighter. Anyway, I really do enjoy that product. It was definitely worth it for me, and it's going to last me a really long time. Um, I'm going to repurpose this, though. I'm going to find another way to use it um, because, like I said, it is a little bit too bright, even um, as winter's setting in um, and I have no tan whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's just not going to work for my under eyes, uh, not the way that I want it to anyway. And even if I use it to um, dot any blemishes on the face, it's really gonna highlight those. So yeah, um, I might just use this as a um, an eyeshadow base once I run out of my MAC um, painterly pot. It's gonna be a long time though. So <sighs> this particular shade wasn't worth it to me, but the product itself is worth it. So I hope you get something out of that. Now the next thing on my list is the La Roche-Posay 
Lipcar AP Plus M Balm Body Balm. Now I have a love-hate relationship with this. I don't like to put this on dry. It it illuminates my skin in a way that makes it look like it's scaly and I really don't like that. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like a fish where you're scraping off the um, the, the skin but mm, it just... I don't know, I don't know. I've got really dry skin, guys. Okay, it looks absolutely horrible if I just put it on dry. But it is a game changer if I just get out of the shower, don't even dry myself off. Grab this cream, slack it on myself. It rubs in really, really easily. I like the skin just goes <laughs> um, And my skin feels amazing, like absolutely amazing. Um, if I do this regularly, this stuff is amazing, but I just won't use a dry. I just can't use a dry. I hate it dry. I'm glad I did um, experiment with how to use this. So, mm, I mean, take it as you will. <laughs> buy it, don't buy it. I don't really care, but just keep in mind that it might make your skin look a little funny, like it's got a highlighter in it. It doesn't, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's got some sort of brightening. I'm not sure, but the product is good. You just got to find the right way to use it, you know? And anyway, I did, so... I don't mind this product. Will I go out and buy it again? Probably not, only because there are so many other brands out there that I want to try, and there are some there are some body moisturizers that I actually prefer better than this. Like I love the Jergens brand that you can get from Priceline. I like that, so if I can't find anything else, I'll probably go back to that one, especially the aloe one. Love it. Um, I think it's aloe soothing. Anyway. I digress. Let's move on to number five. The next thing that I brought this year was the Hask Biotin Boost Thickening Shampoo. This is another one that I have sort of like a love-hate relationship. I love, I love the feeling of putting this in my hair. I love the slight, and I will say very slight, volume that I get with this shampoo. But I don't like the smell of it. It reminds me of the Imperial Leather Soap Bar Soap. Um, this one here, not a fan, not a fan. So if I can get past the smell of this, I love what this does to my hair. Let's move on to number six, which is the Ordinary Retinol 0.5% in Squalene. This was fine. I was actually really, really worried when I first put retinol into my system, um, into my system, onto my skin. I thought I was going to have like severe reaction. I was expecting burning red patches, flaking all over the place. That's why I wanted to go for something that's so small like this, like the 0.5%. And I absolutely loved it. Now keep in mind that the squalene, it did make my face look really, really hmm, um, oily. I mean, it is an oil, but, um, and I did use this in the evening um, just because I prefer it that way with the retinol. Uh, but I didn't hate it and I loved what this was doing. Now since then I've upgraded to a um, retinoid, uh, but I think this is great. This is definitely a good starting point and I actually would like to try the higher percent of um, uh, retinoid in squalene, which they do have. I think they've got a 2% and a 5% and maybe something else. Maybe so maybe a 1 and a 2 and a 5. Anywho, sis, this is good. I like it. It's gentle. Yeah. Next thing I brought was the Schwarzkopf Brilliance 23 Burgundy Chick. I liked the hair color. I mean, it was it was bold. Um, you can't see it in my hair, not really. Not unless the sun hits it and, and then you can sort of see a tinge. Um, but it lasted in my hair for quite some time. I was very impressed with that. It was cheap. And um, I'd definitely buy that one again. The eighth thing that I brought was the NARS uh, Laguna Bronzer. Ah. Oh can I say? The reviews were right with this one. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's what I wear anytime I wear makeup now until something else comes along. This is what I wear. I absolutely love it. Worth every penny um, and I will be wearing it again unless something else comes out that piques my interest. The ninth thing I brought was the Maybelline Master Precise Liquid Eyeliner. Look, I can't really talk about the quality of the product because I've only used this once and it's not the product's fault. I have deep set and hooded eyes and I and I also have these curls right towards the end like my hood comes down you know and makes this just it's almost impossible for me to be able to do a wing without making myself look like a punched raccoon. I've tried all the tutorials and it's just it's not it's not gonna work for me and you know what? that's okay. Um, but I wanted to try anyway, and um, there's some other things that I can use this for. When I did try it, the product was good, um, but I've only used it once, so I don't know 
you know, I don't know the longevity of it. I don't really know whether it was worth it. Um, I didn't get it on special. But, yeah, from what I know, it's okay. It was a little bit of a waste because I'm not going to use it much. Um, but, yeah, I, I will use it. I just, I, I predominantly wanted to sort of fill in um, the lash line at the top. So if I do wear false lashes, you know, I didn't look so... So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. The next thing that I got, number 10 on the list, was the Benefit Precisely My Brow in 3.5. I'm loving this. Now, I do think it's a touch warm um, for my eyebrows, but I don't mind so much because I use another product with it that sort of balances it out. But this definitely does help being so fine. It, it, I can sort of make fake lashes, fill in some sort of blank spots. Um, I really do like this. And I think next time I'll just try maybe the 4.0 um, different shade just to see how I go. I don't know, but I really do enjoy this. But the price, I don't really know whether it's going to be worth it yet. Like, we'll see how long um, this pencil lasts and I'll let you know um, when it ends up in my empties and whether I think it's definitely worth it. But I like it. I really, really do. My makeup application is a hell of a lot easier than it was before I had it. Number 11 on my list is another Ole Henriksen product, and this is the Strength Train Up Peptide Boost Moisturizer. So I got a sample of this, and fucking chef's kiss, I swear this stuff is amazing. Yes, it's got a scent. I'm not usually a fan of that, but this is like a mild citrus, like a very, very mild lemon, and then once you've rubbed it into your face, it dissipates. There's something about this. It slides on like velvet. Like it is, it's deluxe. It really is. I love it. And I want to get the full size. Um, the, the full size is like 50 mil and that kind of pisses me off because I'm typically used to like 125. I don't know. We'll see. The next item is number 12 and that is the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid 2% Serum. Uh, well, it's in emulsion actually. <laughs> um, but it's a serum. Anyway... I like this. It smells kind of funky though. Um, I am going to try, if I can get a hold of it, the Ordinary's Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalane next time, because that's what I meant to buy. But it doesn't matter. This is fine. This is still really, really gentle. Like, I didn't go through the retinoid uglies. I've had no bad reactions. It's easy to use. Um, it just smells a little funky. So I would assume that this would be probably better for um, oily skin types, but as a dry, crusty mummy, I can tell you that I've been able to use it no drama llama. So um, yeah, this is fine, um, but next time I'm going to try the squalene because I really do enjoy what the squalene does to my skin, and, um, and I'm hoping that it doesn't smell funky. So <laughs> there's that good product. It works, and um, yeah, if I can't find the one in squalene, I'll definitely repurchase this one, but... I don't know, I'm getting ballsy. Um, I'm thinking about going up to the 5%. Am I pushing my luck? I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, the next thing on my list, uh, number 13 that I've brought so far this year, is an e.l.f. lash curler, this thingamajiggy here. Um, I mean, it seems fine. I've never really curled my lashes before, I mean... <laughs> No, it just feels it feels it feels weird I don't really need to curl my lashes too much um, I got to be careful like I said I've got deep set hooded eyes and um, if I curl them too much they will they'll, they touch okay and then I'm transferring and uh, um, so yeah it really was kind of like a waste of money only for me so there's that the next thing that I brought uh, this year number 14 on my list is another cleansing balm um I haven't written the brand in here and I can't remember so I'll put it up here for you um look this is okay it's not as good as the um pharmacy um apple cleansing balm that I'm currently using and I really really love that I think I'm going to keep this one as sort of like a backup in case I can't find anything in the meantime to replace my pharmacy one with um because I am nearly sort of out of that so I'll definitely use this one as a backup but I don't think I'm going to repurchase this one it just doesn't seem to be as good I seem to have to use a little bit more it leaves a film on my face I don't know, it's just it's just not my favourite, so I won't be repurchasing that one. Number 15 on my list is the Mecca Max Smudge Brush. I brought this because I really like to put some stuff on the bottom of my lash line. Um, this seems okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I mean, I mean, it, uh, yeah, it's okay. 
it's good enough that I can put the stuff underneath my lash line and it's not going to pull down too far like some other brushes. But I really already had something that could do that. I don't know. I just thought this was going to be like so much better. I don't know. It's a fan brush and um, I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. It's just okay. Let's move on. Uh, 16th on my list is the Patchology Eye Gels. These ones right here. These are nice. These are nice enough. I've got them in my fridge at the moment. These were not my favorite type, um, but they're okay. And I will repurchase them because they're budget and um, I really enjoy it. So yeah, I can't remember the ones that I really, really love. What are they called? I don't know, but these are all right. Yeah. Uh, moving on to number 17 on my list. We're getting close to the end, guys. The 17th thing that I've brought so far this year is the Simple Reviving Hydrogel Eye Mask. I enjoyed this. This was lovely. Um, I was feeling really down. I needed a pick me up. They were two dollars. <laughs> two bucks. So I'm gonna go get myself some more of these. You know, I couldn't go wrong. They were pretty damn good. I've spent fifteen dollars on eye gels before, like even Korean beauty eye gels that are supposed to be like it and a bit, and they were no better than these two dollar ones that I got from Chemist Warehouse. So I'm gonna get some more of these. I'm gonna throw them in the fridge, and when I'm feeling like utter garbage, I'm gonna slap these guys on. Or I've had a rough night and I look like it. I'm gonna slap these guys on. I'm gonna kick back with a coffee and Bob's your fucking uncle. That's all I got to say about that. Number 18th on the list is the Cerave Moisturizing Cream. Um, I got a big one of this because I trialed a uh, sample and I enjoyed it. And this is just the one that I'm putting under my makeup at the moment. Just something really, really basic that's not going to react poorly um, with anything that I put over the top of it. It does a good job. It's cheap. And um, it's got ceramides in it. So, you know, win-win. <laughs> and the last thing, the last thing that I've brought in the last five months... We're, we're close to the year, yeah, yeah, nearly six months, is the Calvin Klein perfume named Euphoria. I brought this because I really, really loved, um, we used to have Avon in Australia, if you're outside of Australia and you're watching this, we used to have it for, for a very long time. Now, I didn't love everything from Avon. Their makeup was, mm, sometimes you got some okay lipsticks. But anyway, I loved their body sprays, I loved their perfumes, and they brought out one, um, Imari by Seduction. Not the first Imari they brought out, but in a purple bottle they brought out Imari Seduction and it had sort of like um like plum notes to it. Anyway, I freaking loved it. It was my signature scent. I loved it so much. It was budget. It just worked for me, you know. And I don't particularly like a lot of female scents, you know. Normally I'm more attracted to male aftershaves, even for myself. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, there are some that are just like, please, it doesn't matter if it's on a male or if it's on me, I'm just like, I am loving it. The Anter Antonio Banderas um, seduction one, I can't remember if it's something seduction, black seduction or just seduction, fuck me up. And then there's that Playboy one, pretty cheap, what is it, Playboy New York, love that. Um, not as much as the Antonio Banderas one, though, i tell you that much for free. But anyway, I'm going off track. So anyway, I was trying to find a dupe for the Avon one because Avon up and left and um, and that I can't ship it uh, overseas. It's got alcohol in it and there's a whole bunch of... Mm. So anyway, um, I did some research. I come across this one. People kept on saying it smelled, you know, just the same, even though um, they shouldn't. They don't have the same ingredients in them. I think this one might have cranberries and not plum, I don't know, but somehow it works, and it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, like, I still love the Avon one, just a itty bit bit more, but this, mmm, I can put this on, no headache, no drama, I'm loving the vibe, and, um, I'm happy, I'm happy that I found something in the meantime. There are some perfumes that I'd still like to have in my collection, I don't have brands yet, because I'm still yet to find it, but I want to find, like, some some citrus ones, like some lemongrass and some earthy smelling ones. I just, I don't know, maybe I need to look at like something like Yuzuzu or something like that. I'm not sure if I said that right. Yuzuzu, I think. Anyway, guys, in another five, six months time, I'm going to let you know the next lot of stuff that I've brought. I'm actually really pleased with myself this year. I have brought 19 things in five months. Um, and I know that probably seems like a lot, doesn't it? Hmm, it does. But a lot of those things did come to me in a cheap 
Bella box, a subscription box, beauty subscription box, and um, I've been able to try all of these things. I've not really wasted my money. I mean, I think there was two products there that I've kind of wasted my money on, two eye products actually, um, and that was the um, the lash curler, the e.l.f. lash curler and the Maybelline um, uh, liner. Um, those two I purchased um, full price, so I kind of wasted my money there. The... Um, cleansing balm that I have that came in a beauty subscription box and that was cheap it's a cheap beauty subscription box so I'm not really salty about that um most of the products I've loved guys I really really have and I really do hope that you got something out of this video and um I hope to see you in my next video which will be coming up very very shortly and uh until then take care of yourselves bye bye